Here I'd like to show you how you can create a layered shader in Maya so that you can apply two different shaders to one piece of geometry. The concept of a layered shader is similar to something you might see in Photoshop where you're able to create two separate image layers and stack one on top of the other. Here in Maya you're able to do the same thing with a layered shader and I'll demonstrate that now. So I've got a Maya scene open here and I've got some geometry set up for a ground plane in the background and then I've got this uh, geometry of a beer bottle in the foreground. And when I look at this through the camera you'll see how I have this composition set up to be rendered. I'm going to open the hypershade window so we can look at the shaders that I've set up here. And I've got a glass shader that I've created to assign to the beer bottle itself. So I'll select the beer bottle and assign that to the bottle so we can render that and see what that looks like. And what we're seeing here is a ray trace render. I've got some reflections in the surface and also some refractions happening through the glass and some color passing through the glass and a ray trace shadow. It's a little noisy because I have the rays turned down to render faster. If I take a look at the properties for this shader and you can see here that I'm using a Fong shader to create that glass material. What I'd like to be able to do is to place a label on top of this beer bottle. Now I could do that with a piece of geometry and assign a separate shader to that piece of geo, but a simpler approach would be for me to use this existing geometry and create a second shader that occupies that same piece of geometry. So I have that label shader set up already and I'll assign that to the geometry in the scene. I'll select the geo just to show you what that looks like and assign this label to it and render that so we can see what that looks like. And what you're seeing is a graphic that's a texture map of the Budweiser label uh, assigned with transparency onto that same piece of geo. I'll select that shader and show you here that I'm using a blend shader to create the material that is the label on top of the bottle. And the goal here is to place the label shader on top of the glass shader so that it appears in front of the glass. And we can do that using a layered shader here in Maya. I'll open the Hypershade window and click on the Layered Shader module. If I double click on the Layered Shader, it will open up in the Attribute Editor and I can see the properties of the Layered Shader. What you'll notice in the Layered Shader attributes is that it has this work area where you can build up the layers for your Layered Shader. When you create the Layered Shader, it comes in with this default green layer node. We can ignore that because we're going to delete it here in a second. But we'll use this work area to stack up our shaders that we want to have layered on top of each other. I can start to build up those layers by dragging them in from my Materials node. So I'll select a material and middle mouse click on that. I'll start with the glass shader and middle mouse drag that into the work area of the layered shader node. And by dropping that node in the work area, I've now created a layer that is that glass material. I can do the same thing by middle mouse clicking on the label shader and drag and drop that into the work area as well. Now that we've got our layers in the work area here, we can get rid of this placeholder texture by clicking on the X beneath it that will delete that layer. When I mouse over one of the layers in my work area, it shows me the name of that particular material. And the way the layered shader works is that the materials that are on the left side of the work area appear on top of the shaders that are further to the right. So in this case, our glass shader is going to appear on top of the label shader. I'd like to change that order, so I'm going to middle mouse click on the glass shader and drag it to the right of the label shader. And now I've changed the order simply by dragging them across in the work area. So now our label shader is going to appear on top of the glass shader. Now that I've built up those layers in the shader, I can assign the shader to my geometry. So I can come over here to my scene, select the piece of geometry, and then right click on the layered shader and assign that material to the selection. Now I can render that image and see what that looks like. Here in the rendered image, you can see that basically this layered shader setup is working the way we've designed it. We've got our label on top of the glass material. But there's a few rendering artifacts that you can see here, and I'll show you how we can clean those up. The basic premise of a layered shader is that anything that is transparent in the top shader will show through to the shader behind it. So if I come back to our hypershade and I graph the layered shader, 
you can see here that the transparent parts of the label shader are being shown through to the glass shader underneath it. And when I look at my graphic here of the texture map that is the label, I can see it's resting on a gray background. That gray color is actually showing up in our render as this gray material on top of our glass. And so in order to get that completely transparent, we want to change that gray color to black. So I can do that by double clicking on that file texture node and then opening up the attribute editor and looking at that. And when I scroll down to the color balance section, if I expand that here, the default color is that gray color that we're seeing. So if I slide that down to a black color, that will change our background to black. And now that allows the transparency to pass all the way through that material into our glass. So I can come back here to my render view and re-render this image to show the difference. So now you can see the transparency is working a little bit better. But if I compare this to a render of the bottle that just has the glass shader on it, you can see that there's another contribution that's affecting the look of the glass shader. And that's the specular map that's coming from our label texture. The specularity is being layered on top of uh, the glass shader. So you're getting this kind of soft glow around some of the highlights that we're not seeing in the glass texture itself. And what that means is that we're basically doubling up our specular highlights. So if I select the shader here, you're seeing we're getting specular highlights from our Fong glass material, but we're also getting specular highlights from our label material, and we'd like to stop that from passing through. The only thing we want to pass through from the label shader is anything that's inside of the label area. So I'll show you now how we can stop the specular highlights from passing through anything that's not part of the label material. Here in my hypershade, I'm going to draw a pick box around both the file texture map of the label and the label shader itself. With both those nodes selected, I'm going to come up here to my window and open up the node editor because it's a little bit simpler to modify the shading network using the node editor. With those nodes visible in the node editor, I can come up here and expand the view to show all of the connections in each of those nodes. And then I'll zoom out. And then I'll click on the Layout button to arrange those in the Node Editor view. And what you should notice here is that I've got two connections happening on my shading network. From the texture map of the label, I'm taking the color channel and connecting that to my label shader. But I'm also taking the alpha channel information from that label texture map and assigning that to the transparency of the label shader. And it's that transparency that allows us to see through to the glass behind the shader. I'm going to use that same alpha channel information to block the specular highlights as well. So I can click and drag on this out transparency node and drag and drop that onto the specular color node. And when I make that connection, now the alpha channel is also going to block the specular color. Now that I've made that connection, I can come back here and render the image and see how that looks. So if I compare this rendered image with the previous rendered image, you can see that there's a difference between the two renders. But what's actually happened is that the alpha channel is blocking the specularity on the label section and not on the glass section. So what we want to do to compensate that is invert the alpha channel as it's applied to the specular highlights. I'm going to come back here to my hypershade and select the utilities node. Inside of the Utilities node, I'm going to drag down alphabetically until I get to the Reverse node, and I'll click on that to add it to my work area. So I'd like to introduce this Reverse node into my shading network, so I'm going to select the Reverse node, and then Shift select the File, Texture Map, and the Label, so all three of those are highlighted. And again, I'll come up here and go to my Node Editor by choosing it from the Window pull-down menu. With all three of those nodes selected, I can come out here and expand this area. And I'll click on the Expansion button to uh, arrange those. And then I'll click on the Layout button to lay them out side by side. I'll click away here in the Work area and then click on the Label node to rearrange it on the opposite side of this Reverse node. And the idea here is that I'm going to take that Alpha channel and invert it by running it through the Reverse node and then reconnect it to the Specular color. So I can come here for my Alpha Output Transparency node, click and drag on that, and drop it on the Input node of the Reverse Utility. 
And then I'll take the output of the reverse utility and drag and drop that into the specular color. Now that I've inverted that alpha channel, let's render this image again and see what that looks like. And now I'll come down here and compare this render with the previous render. And what you can see is that we're keeping our specular highlights in the blend shader on the label section, but we're also maintaining the original properties of the glass shader in that section of the layered shader. The last thing I'll show you is more of an organizational note in terms of working with layered shaders. It's very easy to get a complicated layered shader set up here and then lose track of which shaders are contributing to the layered shader effect. So there's a simple way to keep your uh, hypershade window organized when it comes to layered shaders and that's by applying a simple naming convention. I'm going to come up here to the layered shader and press my control button on the keyboard and when I double click that shader it gives me the opportunity to rename that shader. Because this is a layered shader I'm going to give it a prefix of LS for layered shader and then the number one because this is the first layered shader that I've created. And then I'll give it the name of the geometry that it's assigned to, the beer bottle. There are two other shaders that are contributing to this layered shader here. And I want to label those in the order that they appear in this layered shader network. So if I double click that layered shader, the first part of the shader that appears in the network is the label. The label is on top of the glass. So I'll come over here to my label node and again I'll press the control key and double click that label and I'm going to call this shader LS1 for layered shader 1 and the letter A to indicate that this is the first layer in the layered shader network. And then I'll name it with the name of that material which is label. I'll do the same thing with the glass shader now. I'll come up here and control double click on that to rename it. And this will be LS1B, the second node of that layered shader. And this one is glass material. So you can see here that they're all spread out in the hypershade, but when I close the hypershade window, and then I come in here and I reopen the hypershade by choosing window, rendering editors, and hypershade, once it's had a chance to refresh, it will alphabetize those shaders and keep them all together. So for example, here is LS1, the beer shader, and then right next to that is LS1A, the first component in the layered shader named label, and then LS1B, the glass that goes behind that. So that's just a simple naming convention that will keep your layered shaders organized in your hypershade view. Those are some of the techniques you can use when you'd like to combine multiple materials into a single layered shader inside of Maya.